Welcome to the video and in this project we're going to look at how to make a Red Bull can from wood turning resin. This was very technical as a challenge and perhaps one of the more complex projects I've done. So why don't you watch to the end and find out how well I did? And please let me know in the comments what you think of the final piece. I mean, does it look like a Red Bull can or just a terrible plastic copy? If you look at a regular Red Bull can, it's got multiple segments of blue and silver, and they're also at an angle across the main piece, with the logo surrounded by alternating sections of the blue and silver, so it's not going to be a walk in the park. I'm 3D printing some of the components, trying to hand cut these letters and shapes would be a total nightmare for me, and seeing as I've actually done something similar before, do I really need to show my skills in this again? Go on, please say no. The 3D prints required a lot of cleanup, and I've tried to fine tune the printing, but as soon as I try to film it, the stringing starts. After cleanup, the aim is to set two of the red PLA balls with a yellow resin sun within the final piece, and hopefully that will then mimic the overall Red Bull logo. The Red Bulls are going to be set in silicone, and that will create the mould. Because this is the first attempt that I've done using silicon molds, I decided to double up on the number of pieces just to make sure I had a backup in case something went wrong. Now I'm going to say it here, this may actually be the last of the full resin projects that I post on this channel. Previous resin creations have not been favoured, so I may have to move them to a new channel. But then again, maybe I should persevere. What do you think? Demolding was a bit of a pain, but just found if you go slow, then you won't damage the silicone. Now we've got to separate the 3D print into two separate balls. And of course we've got to use extreme caution when using even a hobby bandsaw, as it could go very, very wrong. Once separated and cleaned up, it's time to put the balls back into the mould. But this time without the sun. So you've got to wriggle them about quite a bit just to ensure the fit is snug. I created a little dam with hot glue and then onto the resin casting with bright yellow resin dye. In this step, I can get away with using a shallow pouring epoxy resin from Epoxyplast and save the deep pour version for later. I've never had a problem with bubbles using either of these systems, though always best to use a pressure pot and a little bit of patience. A little squeezing helps to remove the trapped air bubbles. On to another demolding. I'm using melamine boards to create a resin mould and also have two screws to align the column. The approach of using a sacrificial column for mounting letters or images is one I've been using since my very first video. So in essence, it's just about super gluing all the parts onto a central column such that once it's turned on the lathe, all parts will be revealed and penetrate from the outer surface to the inner surface after the hollowing's done.
There's quite a few letters in this piece and it was only towards the final few being glued into position that I realised I didn't need them all for this stage. I'm only resin casting the blue areas to start with, so I did leave out the bull. Before adding the epoxy resin, I coated areas of the Red Bull logo with a latex solution. So when cutting away the blue sections that should actually be silver, hopefully then I won't damage the logo. Now to affix the column into the mould and seal to ensure there are no resin leaks. For this step I'm using a deep pore resin from Epoxy Plast with resin dyes and pigments from Resin8. Now I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, I'm just simply recommending the names of good products that I've used. I left the resin mould for a few minutes to ensure there was no leaks before going into the pressure pot. Once cured it's time to demould, then on to marking out the areas to be removed. It was only in the final stages of this project, which actually took place over a number of weeks, did somebody point out that there is a Red Bull can that is actually all red with silver writing and would have been a lot easier to have done. Shame. I had to be careful not to cut too close to the Red Bull logo, but close enough to make the removal of the rest of the blue resin possible. This is where I'm thankful for having coated these areas in latex, which has made the whole resin removal far easier. Cleanup from the latex and resin was time consuming as they worked their way into all the nooks and crannies, but at least I could see that the approach I took was going to work. The question to ask would be whether anyone could see an alternative way of assembling the project. I guess there's no way round having to cast this project at least twice with resin. This project was a little like 4D chess and having to work out forwards and backwards in time to ensure I had accounted for each component to be in the right place at the right time in order to get the right effect. Now for the reconstruction. Had to cut another central column on the same angle as the first and then into sections that corresponded to those parts that were cut away in order to retain the blue resin areas only. then had to glue the new column pieces onto the exposed parts of the existing column and finally reconstitute the blue areas in order to match the Red Bull can layout. So it really was a walk in the park. Speaking of which, if you want to make a little extra money, start a dog exercising business. It really is a walk in the park.
Then we had to glue in the remaining letters for the silver resin areas. And only here did I realise my biggest mistake for the project. The central column was too narrow and the letters were going to be too far apart in the final turned piece. I agonised as to whether to start again, but my wife convinced me to keep it going. I could always redo this project another day, she said. Wise words indeed. The last resin casting step is now ready to proceed. I tried to match a silver mirror finish on the can, but this was really difficult. If anyone knows of another project that had great success in this, please let me know in the comments below. So back in the pressure pot and then back out again. If only it was this quick in real life. I've learned a lot of patience over the past year in creating videos for this channel, but I am somewhat frustrated that the two seconds of video footage from it going into the pressure pot to it being demolded, in fact, took about a week. But at least it worked. Now finally we're at the stage where I can get it onto the lathe. So I cut the corners off, as usual, and then turn to the carbide tools. I've always tried not to go too aggressively in the initial stages of turning, just simply to round off the central areas and then square off the base. You can see that there were a lot of resin chip outs, so it was either getting on to a fresh set of cutter heads, or I'd have to recast everything all over again. Perhaps the best part of turning resin is when the streamers begin. Got to keep on turning till you reach the desired outer diameter. And then you can start the sanding. I start off with 60 grit dry, which initially creates a series of streaks of sanded and unsanded resin areas. So I know the cylinder is not yet perfect, but with a bit of patience, and then the whole piece is uniformly sanded, or is it round, or is it flat, it's smooth. A dry sand up to about 240 grit, and then we go on to wet sanding from about 220 grit up to 3000 grit. Time for the hollowing. We've got to try and ensure that both ends meet in the middle as accurately as possible. I wanted to make a diorama for this project, but as I said earlier, I'm apprehensive about its reception on YouTube, and seems like a previous video has had a seemingly negative impact on performance. I know I shouldn't worry about the YouTube metrics, but it is difficult to know what to do, especially as the ad revenue can help with running the channel. It's time for the final polish, and then it leaves the final bits of 3D printing for the top and bottom of the can using a silky silver PLA filament, and then also to print out the Red Bull ring pull. The finished piece. Now the letters don't fit properly the red balls were impregnated with a lot of resin dust, and I would like to improve the silver metallic sections. But overall, for a first attempt, I'm very happy with the final piece. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you did, please hammer that like button, glue your finger to the subscribe button, sand and polish that bell notification. And why not leave a comment below? Let me know your thoughts on this project. Thank you so much for watching, and catch you next time. Oh, and if you hear any bangs in the background, it's fireworks night in the UK. I'm not actually being shot at. <laughs>